Now we know when sport goes wrong that we've heard a lot of negative outcomes. Burnout, stress, anxiety, dropping out, bad relationships with each other on teams, conflict, bad relationship with the coach, resentment. But when we do sport right, which is why we're here, we get positive youth development, we get fun and enjoyment, and hopefully we get lifelong love of physical activity. Because with the rising, and well, I think it's plateaued off, but with youth obesity now, we want kids to love being physically active. And if they have a bad experience in sport or physical activity context, they're unlikely to be active adults. So this is our job. So that's what we're talking about this morning. All right, so I've talked briefly about the Tucker Center. We talked about a few myths that I get about coaching girls. And now let's get to the bread and butter, the sport parents. Okay. I find that um, coaches are desperately searching for information on how to deal with parents. And when I was um, working at Notre Dame at the Center for Sport and Character, I got a call from Minnesota Youth Soccer Association, NYSA. And they said, uh, Nicole, it's like Houston, we have a problem. We have a sport parent problem and we need your help. We need you to help us fix it. <clears throat> I said, oh, is that all? <laughs> and I said, well, if you have a parent problem, you have a coach problem. Because a lot of parents are coaches. And if you're going to change the culture and the climate of youth soccer in Minnesota, you need the coaches and parents on the same page. A lot of the information I'm going to tell you today, I want you to think about how can I use this with my parents. It's not a magic answer, but I'm going to give you a lot of ideas how you apply it is up to you. If it were a cookie cutter approach, just follow this X, Y, Z, and you'll have, you'll have great sport parents and good relationships, you know, I'd be retired down in Cabo, right? But it's not that easy. It's an art and a science to deal with sport parents. Now, sometimes as coaches or as club administrators, you dealing with parents, you might feel like this guy. <laughs> it's not easy. And I want to applaud all of you for doing what you do. Because it's not for the money, right? It's because you love what you do and you probably want to make a difference in the lives of kids. And that is a... As soon as you start talking about sport parents, I didn't hear, I didn't see one person not have a story. I don't know if that's good or bad news. Um, we could probably go around the room and a lot of the issues that you're dealing with are similar. That's the good and the bad news. Um, there's a lot of headlines across the country about crazy things that sport parents do. Now, not all sport parents are, you know, crazy shooting coaches and, you know, punching their children, um, but some are, and it happens with enough frequency that we certainly should be concerned. We had a couple incidents in Minnesota just recently. Um, so this is our um, challenge, is sport parents today, um, I don't know if their behavior is getting worse. A lot of people say it is. I don't know if the data would su uh, support that. It certainly hasn't gotten better. But um, in the climate of highly professionalized mini pros where there's a lot of money and the pursuit of college scholarships, um, things get ramped up quickly, so to speak. I found this picture and I just, uh, made me kind of smile a little bit, but we're not talking about all sport parents doing bad things all the time. We're not talking about every single sport parent being over-involved and pain in the butt. A lot of them are great. They're your biggest allies, and they work hard, and they want to do the right thing. Uh, not all of them are over-involved. Now, how many of you um, know Coach Lucia, or know of him? Okay the Gophers men's hockey coach. 
he has a quote, some of you probably have heard it, is that his ideal hockey team to coach is a team of orphans. <laughs> Who's heard that? Yeah. Right, uh, it's the kind of in the hockey circle, right? But it's brilliant, but sad. Why is that? And kids oftentimes will say, you know what? If we just got to play and there were no parents around, we'd be just fine with that. And what would youth sport look like if it wasn't as adult controlled as it is? We're talking about that need for choice, how we control kids. Um, someone talked about the lack of creativity and innovation in our athletes. It's because we stifle that need for choice. We don't give kids choice anymore. And we can certainly see that in our college athletes. So I put together this continuum of sport <coughs> parent involvement. And not all parents are over involved. Some of them are under involved. They're working, they're trying to make ends meet, they don't have time, they don't care. It's like, well, you know. I played soccer, I don't know anything about hockey, you know, drop you off at the rink, I'll pick you up in a couple hours, right? So some are under involved. And we know that kids love it when their parents are there. Close kids. I always think um, of this one girl I always played tennis against, and she forbid her mother from coming to the matches. Just like, nope, you can't come. So the mom would sit in the car in the parking lot. But then she couldn't help herself, and pretty soon you kind of see her in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was this common scenario we'd see at the tournaments. But most of them are about right. So what we're talking about here is how to accentuate the good and marginalize, and I'm, I have a theory that it's really about 10% of sport parents that make our lives miserable. So on a team that you coach, maybe one of the sport parents is just that parent. You call her Sally or Bob. Not Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, Bob. Just Bob in general. I always say Bob because, well, that's a different story. I had a run-in with a Bob, and so every time I tell a story, it's always Bob. And, um, so what we're trying to do here, how many have read the book, The Tipping Point? Malcolm Gladwell. Someone had the, the slide up on Outliers, another book that he wrote. Awesome books. I highly recommend it. But The Tipping Point is creating a critical mass of people that are on the same page and shifting the culture. When I talk to coaches about sport parents, what we need to do is shift the culture of how sport parents behave on the sidelines. Because somehow what the norm of what it looks like to be a sport parent is to yell and scream and be involved and, and I don't think that that's the best way for parents to be involved. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some evidence that Diane and one of her students did about what kids think about this and my biggest success in shifting that culture with sport parents has been to get them to see youth sport through the eyes of their children. I'll say that again. If you can get parents to see youth sport through the eyes of their children, they start getting it. Because no parent that I've ever met wakes up like, oh, Johnny's got a hockey game tonight, okay, you know, doing the family schedule. You know what, today, I'm gonna show up at that rink, and I'm gonna distract, embarrass, stress Johnny out, make him wish I wasn't there, make him not enjoy sport, hockey's not fun. Yeah, you know what, I think that's what I'm gonna do today. No parent does that. They have good intentions. <coughs> but they end up doing it inadvertently. And they have some parents, after some sport parent workshops I give, they look at me and they're like, I've never thought of my behavior that way. Thank you. I get it. This is about the kids. This is about them. 
and we need to listen to them because they know they're you know out of the mouth of babes is true and I'll show you some great quotes here's another resource the citizenship through sports alliance um, back a few years ago did a report card on parent behavior in youth sport now if those of you who have kids if your kid brought home a D that would be concerning And they have a blank one of these, and you can give them to your sport parents. Grade yourselves. And it's pretty interesting what they perceive they're doing and what they're actually doing. It's very different. I pulled them, um, I did a little sleuthing, and there are some resources on USA <coughs> Hockey about sport parents that you can access. And I loved uh, when Vicki showed the uh, Hockey Canada, it's just a game with the mom and the Pilates and the balloon. I think I've watched that a hundred times. I just love those PSAs because it really gets at the heart of problems that we're dealing with with youth sport. Another framework that I found really instructive for coaches and parents is this triangle by a colleague of ours at University of Miami, Ohio, Robin Veely. She has this triangle about optimal performance, development, and experience. Because as coaches and parents, we're trying to do all three simultaneously. And think about those three C's again, care, competence, and choice. And I ask parents, and I ask coaches, if you could just pick one of these triangles, where would you put your star? Right? So as the coach, you're trying to do all three. But for sport parents, they should not be in this corner. This is not their role. This is not their job. They're mostly here. And development, depending on what social, physical, Vicki talked about physical literacy. Parents are definitely doing this, but not in the context of sport as much as they think they are. So we want the parents to be here. But these three things can happen simultaneously. But it takes effort and it takes knowledge. And her book um, is in the resources um, list with the PowerPoint I gave Michelle. It's called Coaching for the Inner Edge. It's a great book. It's a textbook, but it's written for coaches. I highly suggest it. I use it in my psychology of coaching class. It's very accessible. So let's think about balancing this triad. Another really good book, Mark Hyman's Until It Hurts. It's about sport injuries and youth sport and how many of them can be prevented. He also has a new book out now called The Most Expensive Game in Town. Now it's not written about hockey, it's just written about youth sport in general, but it outlines a lot of the problems that you all are dealing with. It's Really, he's a great writer, and I would suggest either one of these. They're pretty little, good, plain material. But I don't know, if you're like me, I'm always writing down books. I love books, so I'll put a few in there for you. So parental influence. What we know is that one of the biggest predictors of kids' participation in physical activity is their perception of how much the parents value that activity. So if Johnny thinks mom and dad really value hockey and expect him to play, and they think it's important, that's a really big predictor. So when you're thinking about growing the game, a lot of times you're having to market to parents. Do you value this? Do you want your kids to play? What do you expect for your daughters? Because if they value that the kids are more likely to want to play hockey and they're less likely to drop out. So we know that parental influence is very important. And we know that moms and dads influence kids differently. A lot of the, we, we kind of monolithically talk about sport parents, but moms and dads have very different influences on their children. Now from what the literature says um, about parental influence, about moms and dads, um, I'll get to in a minute.